Hi, this is Professor Judy Paparozzi, and this time, this week, we'll be talking about pronoun usage. Now, I hate to tell you this, but most of us use pronouns incorrectly. So I am preparing videos and have prepared videos on all parts of speech in English in order to con construct perfect sentences. And if you can construct a perfect sentence, you can construct a book. Because the key is to use each word in a sentence properly and after you learn to make a sentence which I've covered in previous videos remember a sentence has three parts it has a subject professor paparozzi loves to teach grammar I am the subject of the sentence professor paparozzi it has a verb that that is the action of the sentence or makes the sentence make sense Professor Paparozzi loves her children. Loves is the action of the sentence. But if I said Pap Professor Paparozzi is a lawyer, is is the verb because it makes the sentence make sense. Okay, it completes the sentence. So the first part is the subject, the doer of the action. The second part is the verb, the action itself, or the, the verb that makes the sentence make sense. But third, it must express a complete thought. For example, if I say, Professor Paparozzi is, where's the action? Well, how does that make sense? The verb is, is to make sense, but I have to complete it. So that's that third part. It has to express a complete thought. So Professor Paparozzi is a lawyer. Now, in the sentence I gave before, Professor Paparozzi loves her children. Who receives the action? of the love, not Professor Paparozzi. Well, maybe I do, because my children should love me, but in the sentence only, Professor Paparozzi is not is the subject, the verb is loves, but who receives the action? Her children. And of course, I love Dr. Mario Paparozzi too, okay? So her children and her husband. But in that sentence, it's real. you have to be real clear. What was the subject and what was the object, okay? Well, of course, the verb as well. So Professor Paparozzi is the subject, loves is the action, the verb, and the object of her love, her affection, are her children and of course her husband. Those are the objects. Now let's trick everybody. We're going to use a pronoun in place of the subject and the object, okay? So instead of saying Professor Paparozzi, the pronoun for me is she. So she loves now, what's the pronoun for her children? Because the children are receiving an action, it can't be they, okay? It's got to be them, all right? Real critical. So we have subject pronouns that go with the subjects of the sentence, and we have object pronouns that receive the action of a sentence. Okay, so what are the subject pronouns? I think you're gonna find this very interesting because a lot of people think me and him are subject pronouns and can start a sentence. No, no way. So in the example that I, I have in my class, uh, one of them said, us students or we students. And a lot of my students in previous classes uh, that I've taught get, get this part wrong. They say us students. No, 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 it's we students. Why? Because this it's part of the subject, students. Students do whatever. So the subject pronouns are I, you, of course you doesn't ever change, which is easy. I, you, he, she, and it, it also doesn't change, it can be subject or object. We, you, which is plural, you all, as in you all, and they. So if I said, my children love me, Instead of my children, I can say, say, they love me. Now, what if I say, my son Mario and my son Daniel love me? A lot of people would think I could use him, but you can't. You have to use he. And in this case, since there's two of them, you have to say they. So the subject pronouns, again, the ones that control the action of, this, of the entire sentence, the doer of the action in the sentence, must be a subject pronoun. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. Those are the subject pronouns. Okay, 
So if you look at my pronoun usage, use, usage sheet, which is used by other professors because I love to teach grammar. I love to teach grammar and law so much, and of course human trafficking, but I love to teach grammar. You will see that there are also object pronouns that receive an action, but these object pronouns can never, ever, ever start a sentence, ever. You can't say me and him, you can't say me and her. Those are object pronouns, they receive an action. So while you can speak it with your friends, you can text it to anybody you want, but in a university setting, we use standard college writing, and in standard college writing, you must use the correct pronouns. So I mentioned the subject pronouns, which I'm going to repeat very quickly. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. But now here are the object pronouns that receive an action. Me. So instead of I, we use me to receive an action. Um, like, for example, he hit me. You don't say he hit I, of course. He is a subject pronoun, so that's the subject of the sentence. Hit is a verb, shows the action, and me is the person who received the hitting. <laughs> Not that I like to be hit, but I've never been hit that I can remember except by my mom when I was little and I deserved it. Okay. So the first one, as I said, is me. Me, you. You is unique like it because we can use it for subject or object. So easy. So I sent you a magazine easy. So you can begin a sentence and also as a subject pronoun and it can be the receiver of the action an object pronoun. Easy, easy, easy. Makes it so easy for us. But when it comes to the object pronouns, they're him, her, and again I said it doesn't change. So I gave him a book. I gave her a book. Okay? But you can't turn around and say him and her gave me a book because it would have to be he and she, subject pronouns, the subjects of the sentence, gave me perfect, an object pronoun, a book, okay? So that's why we've got to get this real clear because we hear this in speech a lot. And honestly, I didn't hear this as a kid. I don't know what happened, why people started saying me and her and him and me. And I, mean, I have no idea how these, these beautiful object pronouns changed their personality and ended up as subject pronouns, but they're not. It's incorrect. Say it to all your friends, but honestly, when you go into the work world and when you write for your professors, write proper English. It's real important, really important, should have said. It's really important that during my years as a professor and during all the, on all the work that your other professors put into criminal justice writing and rhetoric, that you learn some real basic stuff. It'll make you so much more of a professional when you enter your profession in the criminal justice system. Okay. Not that you can't say it, but I would strongly suggest you relearn this particular aspect of the English language and learn only to use subject pronouns as subject of the sentence and object pronouns as the object of the sentence. Okay. All right. So, so we, let's repeat. The object pronouns, the ones in the sentence to receive the object of the action of the verb, are me, you, him, her, it, us, you, which doesn't change, and them, all right? Those object pronouns are to receive objects of action. Now they're also to receive the object of a preposition like of or since or for. So when you were saying, I gave the book to, uh, I, I gave the book to a preposition, to whom did you give the book? To Professor Paparossi and her, not to she, because to changes the way it's done, okay? I gave the book, so I is the subject, gave is the action, the book receives the object of the giving, so we can't have two objects, like in this particular case, because you're changing the objects from the books to something else. But when you're using a preposition like two, then you can say him and her, us, them, etc. You just can't say to, to uh, um, Professor Paparossi and, uh, and I, because I cannot be an uh, uh, object of anything. It's always got to be a subject, okay? So here's the classic misuse of the object, the preposition of these prepositions with two and four, etc. Here's the classic misuse when those are used. When someone says between you and I. No, 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 no. Between is a preposition and anything that comes after it must be an object pronoun. Between you and me. And even though people will tell me, oh, no, that's wrong, I'm just, believe me, when it comes to grammar, I have really excellent grammar. I've been well-trained as a professor. When I was 21, 22, I had horrible grammar, much uh, horrible. And then I had to teach it for a couple of years, 
and I also taught foreigners how to speak English, and I learned to speak beautifully this language and to write it beautifully as well. And even when I was in law school, I was an excellent writer. In fact, I was correcting my professors, and my son actually went up when he was in the fourth grade, went up to his professor, and he said, could you, do you are you thinking you're correct when you say between uh, you and I, do you think that's correct? Because my mom taught me it was you and me, and of course that teacher hated him from that moment on. But anyway, between you and me is correct. And if anybody corrects you, tell them to call Professor Paparosi, an adjunct professor at UNCP, and tell her she's wrong, because then she'll throw the book at you, and literally it's the Oxford book on uh, grammar, etc. Okay, so that, there, there's now, there's a one little, little, little thing I've got to point out. The verb to be has two subjects in a sentence. I know that sounds crazy, but you don't say, uh, who did it? You don't say, it was me. Because that was, it's like an equal sign in math. Whatever the subject is, if it's subject, you've got to stay in the subject, uh, with a subject pronoun. Believe it or not, the correct way to, speak, to answer that question, who did it, you say, it was I. Now, how pretentious does that sound? Well, it sounds terrible, uh, but it's correct. So if you hear someone extremely educated, like a Harvard lawyer or a, a you know judge speak, he will he or she will say it correctly. But you can speak it to one another because it's become part of our dialect. But please don't write it. For example, on page two of my pronoun usage guide, you will see when pro pronouns are subjects of the sentence at the top of page two. On the left is the incorrect, which I've cited, and the right is the correct. It was me who prepared the document. But once you see any part of the verb to be, I am, you are, he, she, it is, uh, we are, you are, they are, and then in the past, I was, you were, he, she, or it was, we were, you were, they were, you must use another subject pronoun if that's what you're going to use, okay? So instead of it was me who prepared the document, remember we can't use me. It's an object program, and there's a pro, uh, pronoun, and there's no um, nothing to receive from the verb to be. It doesn't have any action. So you would say it was I who prepared the document. If you're uncomfortable speaking that way, no problem. But if you cannot be uncomfortable writing that way, because this is correct English grammar, you cannot say this. The second one underneath, me and him went to the store because me is an object pronoun. It can't control the action of a sentence. And the same with him. It receives action, a, action, so it's he and I went to the store. Okay? Next one, James and her drafted the appellate brief. Well, how can her do anything? It's not receiving an action. It's drafting something, so James and she. Now here, either him or me, that sounds correct to so many people, but in this particular case, it's the subject of a sentence. Either he or I will do this site checking. Us on the jury, again, it was like the example that we, we do in our pronoun usage chapter uh, and, the, and the first exercises on the criminal justice writing and rhetoric that I also teach uh, and I use the other professors use my videos uh, my students I can't believe how many people have shared my videos it's amazing but we uh, see we or us uh, students and it's always got to be at the beginning of the sentence you will never see an object pronoun so we say we students and in this case us on the jury so it would be we on the jury and it was them who informed the police. Again, this is the verb to be, and them needs to receive an action. So that, remember, that was or is or are is an equal sign. So it's got to equal what the subject is. So uh, it was they who informed the police. Okay, now go down right after that. When pronouns are objects of the sentence, it's incorrect to say, you must give John and I clear instructions. Well, the sad thing is, you may have heard that even from teachers. I correct so many people so gently, as, as gently as I can, but I'm like, if you're a teacher, don't you think you should know that it, you must give John and me clear instructions? They think they sound smarter by using I incorrectly, but to me, it's nails on a chalkboard. Okay, and I'm sure you can all relate to nails on a chalkboard, and maybe you're not old enough to have ch white chalk on the blackboards. Oh my goodness, when they did that. Next one, we urge you to release Susan and he. No, 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 Susan and her, okay? Or in this case, Su oh, he, Susan and him. She has provided the committee and we with blah, blah, blah. No, she has provided the committee and us. The prisoner was released into the custody of John and they. You know that one sounds bad, so it would be them. Between you and I, my least favorite expression in the whole world. So it's between you and me, the defendant is liable. Okay, now there's also another problem, go down to B at the bottom of page two, with what are called reflexive pronouns. 
Reflexive pronouns are pronouns that reflect back to yourself. Myself, yourself, himself, herself, ourselves, ourselves, yourselves, uh, theirs, uh, themselves. Okay. People use that as subject and object pronouns, but they're reflexive pronouns. So we shouldn't say things like on page three, Susan and myself. No, 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 no. You need an object, a subject pronoun because you have you're doing Susan and you are doing the, the action, so it has to be Susan and I. The accident was, and this is more common using it as an object pronoun. And even smart people, really smart, educated people, do this. And mm, my goodness, nails on a chalkboard. The incident was witnessed by Mrs. Hendricks and myself. No, 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 no. Myself must always reflect back to me some action to do with me. So it's in, in, absolutely incorrect. So we don't use it there. The accident was witnessed by Mrs. Hendricks and me. Okay? Now we also have relative pronouns. And relative pronouns are who, whom, this, it, that, such, and which. The key is to decide when to use who and whom. So it's very simple. Who is a subject? Whom receives, receives the action of the sentence? Very simple. Okay? So if somebody is going to receive an action, the pronoun is whom. If somebody is doing the action, it's who. So look at the examples at the middle of page three. Who is testifying tomorrow? He is testifying tomorrow. Whom did you, whom did you depose today? In other words, you either deposed him or her. Okay, so you use whom. Whom did you depose? So you deposed whom? You deposed him or her, whatever. So, so flip the question around and say, who dis, uh, um, did you dispose whom? Now think about it. Would you say, did you dispose he? Did you suppose she? Did you suppose him? Yes. Did you suppose her? Yes. Then it would be whom. So if it matches the M and him, if, if you use that little thing in your head and it matches the M and him, use whom. Okay, so it receives the action. That in which is used, in, that is used in a restrictive clause. A restrictive clause is clearly essential to the meaning of a sentence. Whereas which is non-restrictive, which just means you don't really need it, so you set it off with a comma, and it's that simple. Okay, now here's a little hint on um, going back to page two on whether or not how to figure out which pronoun you should use it's under when pronouns are objects of the sentence the next paragraph as an aid to determining which form of pronoun to use omit the noun and the word and accompany the pronoun this will provide you with a clue on how to do it correctly for example in the sentence you must give john and and i or john and me clear instructions omit the john and omit and and you would say, you must give me clear instructions. You would never say, you must give I. And so take out, it's usually, that's usually when it happens, when there's a, um, another noun like John and the, and the, con, the um, conjunction and. Take it out, see what works, and that's the pronoun that you're going to use. Okay, that's it for reflexive pronouns. I hope your professor can teach you more things. And this is Professor Judy Paparossi, and I'm glad, and there'll be, there'll be plenty of lessons on the internet, I'm making some new ones for my own classes because during my classes, I also you know, I teach human trafficking, criminal procedure, and other classes during the summer, a death penalty, et cetera, because I'm a former prosecutor, I worked in prisons for many years. So I teach a lot of classes and my students also watch my videos. God, thank you very much and good luck in, any, in, in criminal justice writing rhetoric and wherever you're watching this video.